Hi, it's Dr. Saab. This is the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 AMG line 4MATIC SUV Premium Plus. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz GLC. This video is perfect if you have just bought the new 2023 GLC or if you're thinking about buying one. I have done a more in-depth video which is split in two parts where I show you how to use the main controls but this video is perfect if you want to quickly learn the main things you need to know before you drive this amazing car. Please check out the link in the description at the top or below to watch a more in-depth video. Don't worry, you will not need to memorize everything I say in this video because I have made a summary sheet of what features the car has. If you want to learn about what is standard and what are options, please check out my video either from here or from the link in the description. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to fuel your car. So what you need to do is unlock your car and then pressing this to release fuel flap. And then you can like so, and then put your fuel in. And here you've got your, what fuel you can put in the car. You've also got your tire pressures here, which is very useful to put it back do that and then you're finished and then when you lock your car now the fuel flap won't open next thing I want to show is how to unlock the tailgate now to do that you can use the key like so I think you can close it as well yep just hold it and then it'll close it also locks the car you can also unlock there's a button here and that unlocks the tailgate then you've got access to the boot or trunk as the americans like to say now in here we have switches here this switch folds that seat this switch also folds that seat you've got storage here you've got your first aid box complimentary and your high vis which is complimentary you got your carry hook here as well and then you've also got a 12 volt socket You've also got a carry hook on this side and you've also got a little net there. You've got your tether points. You've also got your tether points on the actual seats themselves. And then you've got access underneath the car as well. Tire pressure machine. You've got your repair puncher kit, which I should tell you don't use. I'll explain why a bit later on. But you've got your basket here as well. And another great feature is you can store the parcel shelf. So this parcel shelf also moves just like that, which hides your belongings from thieves. But this can also be stored underneath the car. It'll be stored just in here. So that's a really useful bit of storage. Now to close the boot, you can use the key again, or you've got switches here at the top. So this one closes the boot. This one closes the boot and locks the car. So I'll press that one right now. Now I'm going to show you the rear passenger side. And I can unlock the car by pressing this button. Or I can use the keyless. As this car's got the keyless system, I can unlock the car. And you'll see the mirrors open up. Or I can lock the car. And I can do that on all four doors which is very useful unlock the car and first I'll just show you the child lock system so up is to lock down is to unlock next I'm going to show you inside the car so you've got your electric windows for the rear passengers you got your isofix which you can just push like so to reveal them you got some storage back here this car has the temperature controls of the back, which I will show you later on how to use. You've also got your armrest with a storage for your phone, or you've got cup holders as well. Next thing I wanna show you is how to fold the seats. So you'll see a little lever here, pull that, and you can see it's released. And then you've got access to the rear, Another useful feature, you can 
move, adjust the seat. So you've got more of a more space in the rear if you need to. I'll just put that back. You will notice every time I fold the seat, the front, the front driver's seat will move forward. So that's quite cool. I'm just gonna fold that back up. And you'll see now, the front passenger seats move backwards again. While I'm here, I'll just show you a really cool feature. You can adjust the headdress using this. So you can push like so again and you can move it so that's quite a cool feature and you can do that for both passenger and driver's seat now I'm going to show you the front driver's seat I'm going to get in the car as well what I'll do is I'll start the car up so to start the car push the brake press the start switch here that will then start the car now you've got your controls here to set the height, the driver's seat position. So you can adjust the seat by using all these different touch points and it'll adjust the seat. So it'll adjust the height of this. It'll even go like that. It'll go forward or backwards. I've shown you the headrests. Moving back to the driver's door, you got the lock button, unlock, the car will lock itself and after you drive over 10 miles per hour, you got your electric windows, you got your mirrors, controls, so you just control and then you can move the mirror just like that and then you've got your child locks for the rear windows, so if they keep opening the windows at the rear and you don't want them to, press that button. Moving back, electric seats, you can control the steering as well from here. Electronically, so that's quite cool. If you think, you know what, that's a bit too long to set up your driving position, what you can do is go to home, go to comfort, and now you can set the position. So at the moment, that's not really comfy for me, so I'll do it to about 5'7". Click on start position and now it's setting the seats and the steering wheel to my driving position using my height. So this is the position that Mercedes-Benz recommend. How cool is that? Moving back to the door. Now you can adjust the seats like so. You can even press all these different areas and it will adjust the seat for you. You have got lumbar support down here as well. So you can adjust your lumbar down here. And then to move the steering, because this car has the electric memory seats, you've got the electric steering and you can control the steering like so. And then to set the seating position, all you do is press M, the number, that beep is then to say that seating position is now saved. So the seats and the steering wheel are saved in position number one. If you were to change the seats, all you do is hold the number one, the seat goes back to the number one position. One of my final favorite features is the Hey Mercedes function, where you say, Hey Mercedes, put the heated seats on, and it'll switch on the heated seats for me. Heated seats on. Seat heating is turned on. And if I want to switch it off, I say, Hey Mercedes, heated seats off. Seat heating is switched off. So instead of you pressing the buttons, I always recommend using the Hey Mercedes function. Moving back to the door, you can open the tailgate by pulling. And you can also close it as long as the car's running. You'll be able to close the tailgate, but you will have to push it to close the tailgate. So that's quite useful there. Moving up. We have the lights. Now I would just set it in auto, but here you can adjust if you want the side lights on, the full beams, the parking, and you can also set the lights to be in auto mode as well, which is very useful. You've got the electric handbrake here. So 
you'll see a little light on the dashboard with the letter P. Now, if I pull this, that will then release the handbrake. If I push it, it will then put the handbrake on and I can see the light there. So I always recommend before you leave the car, just check that handbrake light is on before you switch the car off. There are other ways to put the handbrake on as well. So next I'm gonna show you how to actually change the driving gear. You'll see it's in park at the moment. Now if I push the brake, push the stalk down, you can then see it's in D and D1 just means it's in gear one. If I push this, it puts the car back into park. If I push it down, I'm still in drive. I can push it just slightly if I want to, mm -hmm. I'll put it into neutral. If I push it all the way up, it then puts it the car into reverse and then the reverse camera pops up as well. Now this car has got the 360 camera. Uh, that's because this car was optioned with that. Check out my other video on what options this car has if you want to see that. That'll be on the link above here or it might be there. And moving to the camera itself, I'll just quickly show you that. You'll see you've got guidelines, so where the car is going to travel to as I move the steering. So that's really cool. But if I keep reversing, you've also got that red line. Now that red line means don't go past that red line. Otherwise that bumper is going to get hit. Because of the way the camera is positioned, you'll see. Now, as you can see, as I'm reversing, this sensor changes its ang position. And that's just saying it's getting closer and closer. And it's going from blue to yellow to even red. And you can even hear the beep as well. That's it. That's the closest I'm going to get to the, that position. I'm happy with that. Now I'll put the car into park. Let's see what that looks like. You can see it's about the steering's wheel length. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you. That's the recommended length that they say the car suggests. So you may notice these little yellow lines just there. They're just sticking out. That's the recommended distance. What you should leave between the wall or the car behind you. And that's just there for anyone with a wheelchair to access the car around that area. So let's go back and I'll just show you what that looks like. See, that's just enough access for someone with a wheelchair. Now moving back to the stalk, I just wanted to show you again how to put the car into park and how to automatically. So watch this. So I put the car into reverse, but if I want to put the car into park, I'll just push this button here you'll see it's gone to park and now when i switch the car off you'll notice the handbrake come on automatically so i always recommend put the car into park first switch the car off and just double check that parking handbrake light is on then leave your car next thing i want to show you is this stalk now this is for your indicators you've got your automatic wipers so as you twist, you've got a slower automatic wiper mode, a faster automatic wiper mode, and then you've got a manual one. So if you want to take control yourself, you can. This button, if I give that a push, just cleans the windscreen for me. If I push this one, that should be for the rear wiper. So if I press that down, you'll see it just gives a quick blast of water and cleans it. If I press this one, that just means that the wipe, rear wiper is on now. So it will just come on automatically. And you can see the little light there as well. I'll just get rid of that for now. Don't need that. If you pull, you've got your full beam. And you'll notice as I push forward, nothing's happening. Now, if you want the automatic lights to just do it, them, to work themselves, all you do is push this button. And now you'll see it's on automatic uh, lights. So if I push forward, you can see it's in automatic mode. Letter, letter A is just saying 
that the headlights will come on automatically. If I push that like so, that's got rid of the light. What this car can do is uh, the lights can adapt accordingly to the road. So that's why I would leave that in auto mode when you're out and about. But I'm just going to switch that off because I don't need to use that. Now moving to the steering wheel, you do have the paddles. So this one, if I put it into drive, I don't think it's going to show, but you can see it's changed to M. And as you're driving, you can pull this paddle to change gear down or to change gear up. Only if you want to, but I, I just leave it in auto mode, just like that. Oh, that's how I'll drive it. The car will figure itself out. And I'll just put the car back into park. Now, look at the steering wheel itself. You've got the touchpad controls. So this one controls this screen. This one controls that screen. Now, if I click on this button, you can see it takes me to the home screen where I can change the layout if I want to. Just push like so. So if I look at sport mode, it changes the theme of the car as well. So I've got like a red kind of finish on the infotainment screen. And then if I change to understated, again, you can see the theme is slightly changed. So it's gone to a more understated look. So this is quite useful on the motorway. If you're feeling a bit sporty, have in this mode. I tend to just leave in classic. Uh, you do also, you can also change things when in the classic mode as well by flicking your finger just like this. You've got navigation as well. So if you want your sat nav on that screen, as well as this screen, you can. And you've got your assistance. So this is just monitoring what's in front. So you can just see what the sensors are doing, which is quite cool. And then you've got the off-road mode as well, which is really cool. So if you are off-roading, you've got all your information here that you need. And then your service. This allows you to check the tire pressures for the car, uh, the coolant. Uh, if anything basically comes up, you'll get a message here to say something needs to be fixed or there's an issue with your car. You've also got your when the next service is due as well. Now if I go back to classic mode, I'll just show you some other useful information. So I'd probably have it like this, laid out like that. And here you can see your speed limit on the road that you're driving on. If you're set on cruise control or speed limiter, your speed that you're doing, you can see I've got, I've got my um, seatbelt on yet. If the lane assist system's working, you'll see it there. Uh, you've also got, you've got your speedometer, you've got the rev counter, and then you've also got the time. That P is for the automatic parking that this car has. Now I've got a video on that. So if you do want to see how to do that, check out my video in the GLC playlist. It, I did it on the C-Class, but the C-Class technology on the GLC is exactly the same. So please check that out. And then you've got your temperature and what's outside as well. Now, moving down here, I have done a video on that, this as well, showing you how to use this cruise control and the speed limiter. But as you can see, if I change the mode to limiter, You'll see I can set it to limiter. And if I click on this one, it's set to cruise control. But I've done a video on how to use this. Again, check that video out. Use the link up here somewhere and then in the description as well. But it's also in the GLC playlist. Moving to the left hand side, you've got the controls to control this screen. So if I click on the home button, you can see I can change all sorts of things. And I've got the back button as well. So if I click on back, it takes me back. You've then got the controls to use the phone, to answer phone, decline a call. You've got to take, you can change the volume here as well. If you click this, you've got your favorites, which you can customize. And then you've got the Hey Mercedes function as well by clicking that. And then you can say, Hey Mercedes, heated seats on. Please check your Mercedes me settings to use online functions of the voice system. So. That message is just to say uh, to get your car connected to Mercedes me. So if you were to buy your car from a Mercedes Benz dealer, then they should automatically uh, connect your car to Mercedes me. But if you haven't bought from a Mercedes me dealer, 
you would need to bring in your logbook and your ID to prove that it's your car and then take that to your local dealer to get connected to Mercedes Me. Talking about Mercedes Me as well, if you've uh, leased your car with a separate company, maybe through work or something like that, then you may need to just have an email from uh, the leasing company to prove that they've leased the car and that they're happy for you to be connected to Mercedes Me, as some companies don't want you to be connected to Mercedes Me. All you need to do is provide that email and then your ID and maybe the contract for your leasing deal just to prove that it is your car. Then they should connect your car to Mercedes Me or ask your leasing company to actually get the car connected on your behalf. Now moving away from the steering wheel, we've got the engine start stop. To start the car, you need to push the brake, push the start switch, that'll start the car. This button is for your eco stop start. So if I press that, you'll see a light appear saying off. If I switch it on by pressing it again, you can see the eco stop starts on again. Now moving to the infotainment system. If I press the home button, you've got all the different features here. And again, quite in depth on this. So if you do want to see that, check out the link above or in the description or check out the GLC playlist if you want to see a more in-depth on all these different features, including off-road mode. What I should have shown you as well is when the car is reversed, you can change other uh, camera. So you can see if I want to see different parts of the camera, I can. And this also moves as well, which is quite cool. That's quite nice size. I like that. You have the auto. How cool is that? So you got like an auto mode for the cameras. So the car figures out what camera you should be using. I like that. Next, you've got uh, this one that, that just can switches off the parking sensors if you want to switch them off for whatever reason. And then the final button, if you press this one, that just saves uh, the camera. So what happens is if I was to come back to this location, the cameras will come on automatically. So that might be useful, you know, if you've got uh, a driveway that you have to access in a certain way, use that feature. The parking assistance. Now I have done a video again on that. Check out the GLC playlist or in the description, you'll see a full video on how to use the self parking feature on this incredible car. It is on the C-Class, but it's exactly the same on the GLC. Now the next thing you'll probably need to do is connect your phone. So to do that, you just click on connect device. And now again, I've done a separate video on how to connect your phone to your car. So check out the link in the description above or in the description. Next thing I wanna show you is the sat nav. Now to use the sat nav quickly in this car, all I would do is click on where to up, up here and then just put your destination in. So I'll just put in WV2 for HD. And you can see as I'm writing it, uh, a suggestion comes up and all I'll do is click on the suggestion and then I'm away. Uh, all I'll do is click on let's go and then I'm away on the sat nav. While you're on the sat nav, you can see the volume here. If I Please click on that, to the, highlighted route. the sat nav's talking now. And when the sat nav talks, then adjust the volume. So to adjust the volume, you can use the controls here or use the volume controls here. So always when the sat nav talks, then you can adjust the volume of the sat nav. So that's a top tip. Once you're finished with the sat nav, all you do is if you want to change the sat nav destination or anything like that, uh, you can click here and then you can change the destination. Once you've got to the destination, the sat nav will end. But if you want to end the sat nav uh, yourself, just click here. That's now ended the sat nav and now there's nothing on the sat nav. Something I should have showed as well. When on this screen, you can also change what's displayed on your head up display. This touchpad here. And then you've got all these different options as well. I have gone in more depth on how to use this 
in my part two video for the GLC playlist. So check that out. Next thing you'll probably want to know is how to change the radio. So you can change the radio from here because it's on the radio at the moment. But if I click on home, you can see I can click on radio just here. Give that a click. Now I can just search for other radio stations like so. I can search from here by typing in the words, the name for the radio station. And you can see then comes up with all the different options. I can click on it just like that. I can then hold on it. If I hold it just like that, it's saved. And now you've, you can also click on that and you've got your full list of all the radio stations. Click on the star here to save it in your favorites. And then if I go to my favorites, you can see all my preset favorites. And if I want to get rid of one, click on the three dots, click delete entry. And you've got AM as well. All sources if you just want to see everything. So that's very useful. Click on the back button here. So there's loads of different ways to control. And then if you click on the cog, you can change other things like how you want the bass, the treble, all of that good stuff, the balance and fader. And this is really useful because if you have rear passengers uh, and you don't want to disturb them with your music, let's say they've got their headphones connected to an iPad or something like that. Uh, what I do is on a long journey, I'll just have the speakers on at the front, just like that. And then I'm not disturbing them and I can still listen to my music at a good volume. So that's quite useful. I'll click on reset. Sound focus, I've gone in more depth on this in my other GLC video, so check that out. And then you can connect your media as well. So you can connect stuff on USB as well. So your USB slot is just here. So you will need an adapter to connect if you've got a US, an older USB. This is USB-C, which is the latest technology. So you've got USB-C, which is the latest connectivity. You've also got a wireless charging pad there for your phone, if you've got that. iPhone 13 Pro Max does fit in that, so that's a very big little area. And I'll come back to this area in a, in a moment. Now I'm just gonna go back. That's the main things I wanna show you on here, really. Uh, you do have apps and dash cam, but again, I've gone in more depth in another video on that. The off-road mode, that's quite cool actually. I'll just quickly show you off-road mode. So if I click on this button here and the car, as long as it's running, if you put the car into drive, you can now see everything that's underneath the car. How cool is that? I love that feature. It doesn't work when you reverse, but if I put the car into drive in a sec, you'll see it has to re-remember everything, I think. Yeah, and then, but that's really cool. So if you are off-roading, I think that's a really useful feature. But again, you've got all the useful off-roading things that you need to know. I'm just gonna go back. Next thing I want to show is how to use the temperature controls. Now, you'll see I can change the temperature. It's got dual zone climate control. So I can change the temperature for the front and the rear, uh, for the passenger. Let me just check, and the rear, is the rear the same now? I'll just have a quick look. So rear passengers is set slightly differently. So it's four zone climate control, which is quite cool. I like that, I like that a lot. Set in auto mode, which is probably the best option. Let the car figure it out. Switch it off from there. Keep it in auto, that's what I would do. Now, Mercedes-Benz actually recommend the temperature to be 22 degrees. Now, if you find that you want the temperature to be the same on both sides, for the, all you do is click on climate menu. It changes the temperature to 22 degrees. When you do that, the rear of the car, the rear climate zone as well, 
they'll set to 22 degrees so the whole car will be 22 degrees which is really useful I think but Mercedes-Benz recommend 22 degrees is the optimum temperature when you're in the car now you can change the fan speed if you want to or you can switch it off just like so click on auto and the car let the car figure it out I just do the air distribution right now I'm gonna leave it off but if I just show you just slightly as well You've got these controls here as well. So if you do were to change the temperature and you want it to be the same, you can click on sync. It'll say 22 degrees. If you want the AC to be off, you can. I would recommend keeping it on. You can adjust the fans like so. You can switch it off as well if you need to. So you can switch it off like that. If on a cold day, you know, you got a frozen windscreen, click on this one and all it'll demist the front screen click on rear I'll do the rear and you got climate menu as well so that just gives you all of that information and the second row seats I can control from from the from the front as well which is cool but yeah I just recommend keeping the car on auto let the car figure it out on how to distribute the air what I find by leaving an auto, the car will then um, have a less demisted screen, so it won't get as misty. I find it just doesn't mist up at all, so that's a really useful feature. Next, I want to focus on the controls under the temperature controls. So if you click on this one, that just changes the car's uh, dynamic uh, mode. So you've got comfort which you'll automatically set to you got sport you've got eco and then you've got the driving off-road mode as well which is quite cool now let's activate that let's see what that does is it going to do anything oh you can see maximum speed 68 miles per hour and it's in off-road mode so the gearbox will just figure itself out on what to do but if you want to set the settings yourself you can by clicking the cog here and now you can adjust things like the like the the engine if you want that to be a bit sportier the steering if you want it to be a more heavier feeling steering but I'll keep it in comfort you got ESP now you can have that in comfort or sport I just keep it in comfort oh oh the sound of the car you can change to a more sportier sound if you want to that's pretty cool so that's quite useful we'll remember if you don't want the eco stop start to work it does actually save you fuel so I'd keep that on but if you're in a rush it might be just worth keeping the car in sport mode next if you want the cameras just click on this button and then you can see all the cameras so you don't have to engage reverse and then you can just click on whatever camera you want to see which is very useful if i click this button if i click this button I've then got uh, some quick access to certain things such as the interior protection now this is really useful so if you ever leave anyone in the car uh, let's say you're at a petrol station what you can do is click this button and the in motion sensor is off now. Now I can leave the car, lock the car with the people inside and the car alarm won't go off. So that's a very useful feature. I'm going to leave that on for now. But if you need to switch anything else off like the parking sensors or put in car wash mode, you can. Tow away protection, always keep that on unless the car's being towed away. That is very useful. All settings. That just gives you more information where which i have got it which i've explained in another video but if i click that again you've got my favorite so you can customize this by clicking add favorite and then choosing certain things so you might have a favorite such as what radio station you like or what driving position you want anything like that you can save that there next you've got the hazard lights give that a click you can see the hazard lights are on and it flashes as well you've got your sensor here now you do need to be connected to mercedes me for this feature to work 
but then you can have around, I think, around six people or something like that. And that allows you to save their preferences for their seating, how they want their MBUX to be laid out. So that's quite cool. You got this button here, which switches off the system so you can display off or have the system off. Again, press it again and it'll put it back on. And then you've got your mute button here and then the volume controls, which you just adjust like so. Moving up, we have the controls, more controls. So we've got the button here, which allows the lights not to come on. Uh, you've got your rear light controls. You've got your lights for the front as well. You've got the Mercedes me button here. So if you click that, uh, that's for your breakdown cover. So this car does have breakdown cover. So if you click that, so once you press that, Mercedes-Benz will then know where your location is. They'll check if you're okay. They'll send the breakdown recovery truck to see you. And if they can't fix you there and then, then they'll try and take your car to a local dealer within the area. And then they'll try and sort you out in a courtesy car if they can. Worst case scenario, they'll put you in a taxi. What'll happen next is they've fixed the car. They can then drop the car off to your local dealer. And then you can pick the car up from there. And if you've got a courtesy car, you can leave the car there. You can press the button there, but if you want to call them yourself, then you can. And the number is in the door, on the door sill. So you've got two different ways to contact Mercedes for your breakdown cover. Now, I think this is really useful as well. If your car is within the three year warranty, you get the breakdown cover complimentary. As long as the car is serviced by Mercedes-Benz dealer, then uh, you'll have the breakdown cover for up to 30 years. So every year, as long as you get the car service through Mercedes-Benz, then uh, you'll have the breakdown cover up to 30 years. How useful is that? Moving back up here, you've got the SOS switch. So again, if you're in an emergency, press that button and then um, someone through the speakers will speak to you. The car's basically got a SIM card built into the car. They'll check if you're okay. If you're not, they'll just send the emergency services to you such as the police, fire brigade, or ambulance. Now this system automatically works if the airbag ever goes off. So if the airbag ever goes off, the SOS system will be automatically engaged for you. And what'll happen is through the speakers, someone will speak to you. If they don't get a response, they'll just send everyone out to your location. And I think that's a fantastic safety feature. You've also got the light controls by clicking on the light themselves. These are not USB-C slots. I think they're just a microphone slot. That light will always be displayed. It'll only say on when someone sat there. So that's a top tip. Nothing's wrong with your car. You got your rear view mirror here. And then the final feature I need to show you is how to use this amazing panoramic sunroof. So all you do is swipe like so. If you want to close the panoramic sunroof, just do that. So again, just swipe like that. What you can do as well, if you push this button here, you can see the sunroof just open slightly. If you push it down, you can get it down. Push up like so, that'll open slightly. And then swipe like that, that'll open the sunroof. Really nice open space. And then to close, just like that, swipe it. And then it should completely close. Yeah. How cool is that? Staying at the top, you've got your sun visor as well. So you can store a card here. And then you've got your vanity mirror as well with courtesy light. Very useful. And then you've got the same again for the passenger. I think. Does this come off? Yeah, it does. You can move it just like that as well. You got your grab handles as well at the top. Very useful. And moving down, we've also got some storage in here. Got your cup holders. So you can push like so. You can put your key there if you want to. That'll charge the key slightly as well. I'll get rid of this actually. 
you've got some storage in here as well by pushing this and then you've got some more USB-C slots here and then you've got some storage here as well very useful now one of the coolest features on this car is the ambient lighting and that's something I genuinely love and you can change the color now to change the color all you do is go to home go to settings go to lights scroll down to ambient lights edit setting and now you can change the colors you can have a multicolor layout a monochrome layout you can change the brightness if you want to if you want certain zones and you can change that if you want to and the zones just allows you to change the lights from the top to the middle and all the way to the bottom so that's pretty cool and then you can have effects as well so you can change that all that good stuff what i tend to just say is hey mercedes change the ambient lighting to blue and usually it listens okay i'm changing the color you see that how cool is that let's change the ambient lights to blue I love that feature, don't you? So the final thing that I need to show you is how to release the bonnet. Now to do that, it's quite easy. I'll show you now. Just go under, go to the foot pedals. So just where the pedals are, the handle here, pull that, and then go to the front. You can see it's just slightly opened. And there should be a catch just here. There's a catch just here. Pull that. And I'll release. And then you got the engine. And again, you don't really need to worry about anything under here. All I would do is just get your service done from a Mercedes-Benz dealer and then do a winter and a summer check. They'll top up your fluids for you and all that good stuff. So you don't really need to worry about any of that. But if you do want to do it, put your oil in here. Up here is where you put your washer fluid. Access to the batteries just there. And then to close it, all you do, that's closed, just like that. Please subscribe as it helps me and the channel grow and create even more content. Please like this video. Also comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Check out the GLC playlist for more videos related to the GLC, including a full video on what specification the car has in the video. Some of the videos in the GLC playlist will be of the C-Class, but the features will be the same. So hopefully it helps you out too. There are videos on how to connect your phone to the car, how to use the self-parking feature, and even videos on how to use the cruise control and speed limiter. I've even got one where you connect your Apple CarPlay. There is a new thanks feature. If you wanna to donate to the channel, then please feel free to use this feature and any money raised from YouTube will be used to buy more equipment. Thanks for watching.